Last week, I challenged you that in this series, we're, we're trying to think like a farmer. So again, I want to ask you to put your farmer's hats on. And just uh, for, for a quick review, some of what we looked at last week is we looked at like three must-haves for a harvest, three must-haves for a harvest. The first thing that you have to have before you get a harvest is, of course, the seed, right? And the seed is what? The seed is what you sow. And last week, we looked at the seeds and the different kind of seeds that God has given us. He's given us the seed of time. He's given us a seed of treasure. He's given us a seed of talent. And what's really amazing here, even, even as you look across this 8 a.m. service, the diversity of the time, treasure, and talent that God has even right here in this room. Think about all the potential in the seeds of our lives that God has given us. So we have the seed, but then we also have the soil. The soil is where you sow. And, and where you sow is very, very important. Uh, if you want to see a harvest uh, in an area in your life, you've got to sow into that area of your life. You can't sow into one area and expect to harvest in another. It, the soil matters. So the soil is where you sow the seed of time, of treasure, of talent. And then we ended with the act of actually sowing. Um, the sowing is the act of giving. The sowing is like when you actually do it. Now, this is where some of us are hung up. We know about the seed and we know about the soil, but we just haven't done a whole lot of sowing. We haven't done a whole lot of sowing for the things of the kingdom of God. Now, we've done a lot of sowing for our kingdoms, but very rarely have we done sowing for, our, for his kingdom. Um, man, I've done some sowing for the things of my bass boat and for my hobbies and all that's great and God's not anti that. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, <laughs> But however, uh, he, he does expect and does invite me in to sowing first into his kingdom. What we're going to see today is that order actually matters to God. So as we're talking about soil, I will just ask you a question just by way of readying our hearts. What are we going to do? We're going to tenderize our hearts for the word of God today. Where are you currently sowing your time, your treasure in your talent, because the truth is you're sowing it somewhere. You're sowing your time somewhere, your treasure and your talent. Where are you sowing it? My next follow-up question is, is where are you sowing your time, treasure, and talent? What will happen with it when you breathe your last breath? Like, where would, your, where would your investment, your primary investment, your most important investment, your first investment, where will it be? So every seed needs sowing, and every seed needs soil. So I have to sow it before I see it. I like that. I have to sow it before I'll see it. Can you say with that with me on the count of three? Maybe it'll come on the screen behind us. I have to sow it before I'll see it. One more time. I have to sow it before I see it. Hey, as a church, we have a history of sowing. Our church now is 10 years old. And I, my family and I, had the honor of being the first people to actually sow into this ministry. We had the chance to uh, ask God, God, what are you up to and how can we be involved? He invited us to plant a church up here in, in North Idaho. We moved here from the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And uh, I stepped out in faith. I, I stepped away from a ministry that was very, very generous to us. We had been there for 16 years. Um, I was the executive pastor there. And uh, we had financial security. We had a great, great future there. But I don't know if you've ever experienced this, but when God calls you, it's a yes or a no. And, and to say no is to be disobedient. And so we, of course, said yes. But in, in doing that, it took some faith. It took some sowing. It took some some decisions that on the outside just didn't make a whole lot of sense. As a matter of fact, a lot of my closest friends and maybe some family members were like, are you sure? 
Now, are you sure about this? They would, they would ask me, I like that. I, I like friends that ask, like, hey, are you sure? Are you sure you heard from God? How do you know you heard from God? All those are important questions. But my wife and I, we were sure. We were certain. But just because we were cert- certain doesn't mean that it didn't take faith. It still took faith because I had about four months where I had no income. I had about four months where I had a large mortgage in a house in the Dallas Fort Worth area with crazy property taxes. But we knew God called us. Now, in the process of that, we also knew that this new church that is now One Place Church was going to need resource to get it started. And sure enough, uh, it started to need resource. And it started to need, uh, you know, some, some structure and some, some, some legal documents and all the things that you need to begin uh, a church. And so uh, guess how much money was in the church account back then? Zero, because there wasn't one. It was zero. And so my wife and I, uh, of course, because this is what God put on our hearts, we, we began to sow seed into that. And then uh, as we moved out here, um, man, the church then at some point, we knew we were going to start Sunday services. And so we had to get a trailer and we had to get all the essentials uh, that you need for, for church. And we were doing mobile church for the first three years. But here, here's what I'm, I want to get at. There was seed that had to be sown. And in a time where it made no sense, my wife and I, compelled by God, again, you know, our, our heart has been, man, we get to do this, not that we have to do it, right. that we've been invited into it. I, I can't believe that God has invited me here into North Idaho to advance his kingdom. That's been our mindset and that's been our heart, but, but it still required a sacrifice. And so my wife and I, in a time that made no sense, gave the largest financial gift we have ever given um, to buy the trailer and buy all the church essentials and begin to make the move and get things moving um, up here. And, and in that, uh, man, we saw some harvest. We opened the doors. We started seeing a life change. I'll remember our first baptism, all of the things. Three years later, as the church is growing, uh, we had the opportunity to move in this place. And there was a handful, some of those are here today. There was a handful of us that gave to an initiative called Greater. And we sowed into Greater. And you know what? There are kids, I want you to think about it. I want you to think about those of you that were here. The, the, the seed that you would sown, I promise you, if you look over the rear view mirror of your life, not only has God replenished that seed, he's given you more seed, and there's been a harvest. I can tell you one har- harvest, there's been a harvest of souls. There has been hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of people that have given their lives to Jesus because of your seed. There have been students, there have been kids, there have been marriage restored, there's been addictions broken. All of this is because you were willing, and you did, and I'm grateful we're sitting in seats that you sowed seed for. We're, we're sitting in life change and we're sitting in relational connections because of your generosity, because you get the principle of the harvest. You understand seed time in harvest. So um, I have to sow it though before I see it. And so for those of you sowed to get us in this building, thank you. But look around, now we see it. Yeah. We see it. We see it here. We see it in the lives that are being changed. We see it in a a group of little kids that were, you know, one years old, and now they're in sixth grade. That's my daughter. Like, when we moved here, and now she's started in our One Place Kids, and now she's in our student ministry. It's uh, mind-blowing. I see it. I see it. But you got to sow it before you see it. And I wonder for 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 any of us here today, how many things we failed to see because we failed to sow? Just in our lives, in our marriage, that we want to see God move and we want to uh, be a part of what he's doing, but you, you're not going to see it until you sow it. You're not going to see it until you trust God in these areas of your life. So we've talked about seed. Let's talk a little bit about time because time is critical for the harvest. You have time and you have timing. And the time and the timing is when you sow and then how long that seed remains in the ground. And with the principle of the harvest, um, there's always time. It always takes time. And it always takes timing. 
Uh, every seed we know needs time to germinate. Every seed actually needs time that it's buried into good soil and it's in the dark place. It's in a hidden place. And it looks like it could be the end of something, but we know that the way that seed time and harvest means is, works is that it's just the beginning. It's just the beginning. So maybe I would just speak that into your life right now. Maybe there was a seed that you've sown. Maybe you're sowing seed into your marriage right now, and you are sowing time, and you're, you're, you're just trying to make extra effort, and, and, and you don't feel like there's a harvest. Listen, it takes time. It takes time. Maybe there's some parents here right now, and, and you, know, you have some, some students who, they're not, they're not living the way that you raised them. They're not walking the ways of God, and you prayed for them, and you had them in church when they were little, but it seems like they're walking away. Listen, it takes time. Don't give up on the seed that you have sown. Every seed needs time to, ger to germinate. Uh, and this runs totally against our, our instant gratification culture. I want it right now. I want it my way, and I want it right away. But it's got to stay in the ground for a while. And it, it, it's got to actually have time to germinate. There's one particular couple I'm thinking about, uh, and this gentleman shared a little bit of his story with me a few weeks ago, who... Um, was praying for what gift that they were going to bring to help us begin this process of the Goodland, build, Goodland Building Project. And, and, and he told me that as he prayed, God really challenged him to, to give in a big way. And then he talked to his wife, and she confirmed, yes, we need to do this in a, in a big way. And what he told me, though, is like a year later, because it's been a year since they did that, a year later, he said, every seed that we sowed has been replenished, yeah. and some, That's right. but they wouldn't have seen it yeah. if they hadn't have sown it, and, and they probably didn't see it the first day after they gave it. It takes time. Mm -hmm. It just takes time, and I want to encourage you, is if, if you've sown time, treasure, talent, don't get frustrated. Don't grow weary. Right. Know that it takes time. It takes time. You might be sowing today for what you'll see three years from now, five years, seven years. I think about my kids' college accounts. Hello, somebody. We started putting money back in our kids' college accounts right when they're first born. And now my firstborn has graduated from college. And I thank God for that account, okay? You know? And so right now, I see the harvest. But I didn't see it. There was a lot more fun things for me to sow that money into. Come on, somebody. How about y'all ever feel that? Anybody ever tempted to take money out of an investment and to go, you know what? This is maybe more important right now, or this certainly would be more fun right now. It takes time. But also timing's important. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Um, Jesus said this. He said, but seek what? First. Timing is important. Order is important. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. So, so many of us seek God last and not first. And to God, order is everything. Order matters in what you bring him in order of your time, of your treasure, and of your talent. Now let's just talk about money for a second. Let's talk about tithing. We gotta talk about it. You know, people get funny when you talk about money, and your people, let's talk about money. You'll get a little funny on me real quick, but that's okay. Let's just talk about tithing. Tithing was set in place even before the law. We, we see tithing from the very beginning. We see tithing all the way back in the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 14. We see Father Abraham. You remember Father Abraham, right? Yep. Had seven sons, right? Yep. So... Father Abraham, the father of our faith, in Genesis chapter 14, he's coming back from battle, and the Bible says that after battle, he actually goes and he gives to Melchizedek, who was the, the, the priest of God most high, the, the priest of Salem, 
uh, the book of Hebrews actually says that he is a, he is a, a, a Christ type. So he has no beginning, no end. So we see all the way in Genesis chapter 14, 17 through 20, that, that this idea of sowing and sowing first and sowing in order has always been there, even for Jacob. This is before the law. This is before Moses. Even Jacob, Jacob in Genesis chapter 28 and verse 22, Jacob said to God, everything you give to me, I will bring back a tenth, a portion to the house of God. So we see this over and over and over again. And yeah, then we see it in Leviticus and then we see it in Deuteronomy. We begin to see it. And you see it carried out through the entire New Testament. Listen, tithing was a major test then and it's a major test now. It involves some serious trust. And I'm convinced that God does this, number one, to challenge his people to trust him. Because nothing more often in our lives controls us like money controls us, just very practically speaking. And so when you think about tithing, when you begin to think, no, this is actually about praise, honor, and glory. That's what tithing's about. It's about, oh, look what God's blessed me with. I'm gonna tithe to praise him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for providing. Thank you for making a way. Uh, Now when I think about... um, a paycheck. It's not just that I'm going to praise him. I'm going to honor him. God, I'm going to honor you by what? By bringing you the first. Tithing's about praise. It's getting your eyes on what it's about and, and who it's about and where it came from. It's about honor. God, I honor you. I bring you the first because you got it to me. And then it's also about glory. It's about giving him glory. And there's nothing that robs the glory of God more than God's people robbing him of the tithe. That robs the glory of God because you're taking the glory. You're saying it's mine and look what I've done and, 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 and God doesn't need it. No, no, no. Give him the glory. Give him the praise. Give him the honor because he is worthy. So God asks the first for the first because it requires faith. And by tithing, it's as if you're saying to God, I recognize you first. I'm putting you first in my life. I trust you to take care of the rest of the things. But God, I bring the first to you. Praise, honor, glory. And here's the thing. The first portion is the redemptive portion. In other words, when the first portion is given to God, the rest is redeemed and blessed. And I'll unpack that a little bit more in a minute. Proverbs 3, 9 through 10 says this. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase so your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. And of course, we know in the Old Testament um, times, many people were farmers. They raised animals, grew crops for their living. And so their increase came from actually their crops and from the, the, the animals that they raised. Today, you might be a banker, you might be a real estate agent, a teacher, a barista, a state trooper, a police officer, you may be in the military, you may be a lawyer, you may be a doctor, you may be in construction, whatever it may be, that's how your increase comes. And so it's still about the first, though. It's still about the first. The first you receive and the first you spend. That's what it's about. It's you recognizing, me recognizing. So the first portion of your time, the first portion of your treasure, the first portion of your talent is the trigger that redeems and blesses the rest. So if you say God is first in your life, but he's last in your finances, he's not really first. If you say God is first in your life, but he's last in your time, he's not really first. If you say he's first in your talents, but he's last, actually last in your talents, no. He's not really first. 
And so these areas, our time, our treasure, our talents, these seeds that, that God has given us to manage and to stewards are a true litmus test of whether or not he's truly first. So we have the seed, what you sow, the soil, where you sow, the sowing, and then the time and the timing when you sow. Um, I like to say it this way, payday is test day. hey oh, yeah. <laughs> Payday is test day. And I'm just telling you, this is not in a bragging way because it's only by the grace of God. I've not, missed the, I've not failed a test. I've not failed a test from the, from the time my wife and I got married. When we made $12,000 the first year of marriage, we still tithed. Amen. Payday is test day. Because you know what? I'm learning and I've learned that God can be trusted. Yes. And he can do more than the 90% he says that I've given you freedom to use than I can do with my 100%. He can do so much more with it. So God says, trust me with the 10, and I will take the 90 further than you can ever take it. And I promise you, there's tithers in this room that would say amen. Any amens out there? Amen. Okay, there's a few of you. Amen. Okay. But here's the thing. Fear does talk. Fear talks to you and talks to me. And fear says this, I don't have enough right now. I'll never have enough pace. If I made double right now, it still would not make financial sense to me to bring God 10%. So we think that the answer to generosity and trusting God in an area in our life is that if he would give us more. God, if you give me more, then I'll trust you. No, 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 no. The answer is not more. Again, God can do more with your less if you trust him. But so many of us, we just live with this scarcity mindset. And I understand, I didn't grow up a lot with a lot either. And so you have this, this scarcity mindset that you, you have to scrape and claw for everything that you get, and then, man, you're proud that you got it, and, and you live, and you're afraid you're gonna lose it one day. You think back, and you're like, you know what? I was raised in a way that I don't want my kids to ever face. And so you have a scarcity mindset, and as a result, you're holding on with white-knuckled grip on your time, your treasure, and your talent. And God says, no, no, no. You let me have freedom in it and watch what I will, will do. You know, you probably did this when your kids were little as well, but maybe sometimes you gave them something and then you asked if you could have what you gave them. You know, maybe you give them some candy or you give them a little treat and you say, hey, can I have some of that? And what are you doing? In that moment, you're just testing their heart. How many times they looked at you and said, mine. Yeah, me too. No. They look at you straight up, say no. You're like, hello. Who put that treat in your hand? And it's the same thing is what you do. And it's what I do when we hold back from God. And God says, hey, like, I'm just going to test your heart for a minute. Payday is the test day. I'm just going to test your heart. Do what the scripture says. Trust me with it. And you're like, no. No, I'm not there yet. And this is an area that we need to grow up. Let's talk about the harvest. Let's talk about the harvest. The last part. This is what we want. Woo, the harvest. We all want the harvest, but it takes the, the, the sowing and the time to get to the harvest. But when I pass the test, the rest is blessed. When I have the seed, I sow it, I let it sit, and I trust God in the timing, Everything else from there is, is blessed. And let's talk about blessing real quickly. There's two types of blessing that I want to talk about. First is God's provision. God's provision. God promises if you live on sound biblical principles, he will bless the rest. Now, that doesn't mean that you can be foolish with the other 90% and think that he covers you. No, no. God promises you to provide your basic needs if you trust him with the first. So he promises you, I've seen this in my life, your basic food, shelter, and clothing. Not our basic wants, our basic needs. So first is the, the, protect, the blessing of God's uh, pr provision. He's gonna provide, but you've gotta trust. You gotta pass the test first. But then also his protection and his protection actually doesn't mean that you won't lose money on a car. It doesn't mean that you won't take a bath on a house. It doesn't mean that you won't lose money in an investment. But what it does mean is that, that God will bring blessing into your life when you need it to protect you. 
He will protect you. He will guide you. He will, he will cover you. Listen, this has happened for us in medical bills. I mean, just in the right time. I remember when my son got hit by a car and we had to get a life flight from Spokane. I mean, there was, I'm talking about critical timing with insurance for that flight, that $20,000 flight to be covered. I'm talking time was of an essence, but God protected us, come on somebody, and got it covered. He, he's protected us in house uh, sales. He's protected us even when I didn't have a job. I told you guys that I was gonna tell you the story about Willie George, you know, when he came a few weeks ago and why he's so significant. But the short story of it is, is when I resigned from the church that I was a part of, a month had gone by. I get a call from Pastor Willie that one day in November. And he says, Pace, my son, his son, Wit. He said, Wit told me what you're doing. I'm really excited. You're gonna do a great job. Tell me about where you're going, what God's up to. And so I began to tell him about what we were gonna do out here and what we thought it could look like. And we, let, we got to the end of it. And um, just only as Pastor uh, Willie could, he said, well, Pace, let me ask you a question. How's your money? I said, what money? I don't have any money, you know, because we stepped out in faith. And uh, I'll never forget he said, well, Pace, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna write you a check, and he said an amount, which this amount was like, wow, that covers my bills for a month. And I'm like, praise, honor, glory. Thank you, Jesus. But here's what he followed up. And he goes, and I'm gonna write that same amount for the next 12 months, every month. In one phone call, the largest gift we ever had given financially was covered. Amen. Just like that. And can I tell you, he did that for the next three years in the life of our church. That's why he's a special man for you and for me. Yep. He sowed seed, though, that he's just now seeing harvest. Yeah. He's just now. You are his harvest. Yep. You're a part of what he sowed into. Man, I just thank God. And I'm telling you, you are not living life until you start trusting God in this area of your life. God has protected me. God has protected our family. Um, and I know there's many others of you that you could say, yeah, this is true for me. So this is the way to get beyond worrying about money. If you're like, I wish I could have that kind of life and that mindset. You can but you get it by giving. You get it by sowing and time. And then the harvest comes. It, it comes through trusting. You, you can't see it until you sow it. We, we push forward through the Old Testament and the last prophet, Malachi, chapter three, verse 10, he says, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that, that there may be Food in my house, test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. So this was in a time when Jerusalem was rebuilding. Um, they're, they're returning from captivity with Babylon, uh, being in Babylon. And so God has established then the tithe and is established here today. It just carries right through for God's house. He established the tithe for the Levites back then to provide for the Levites and their families. And he, provided, he, he asked for the tithe for reverential worship. And I think this last one's the one that we a lot of times forget, that giving your time, giving your treasure, giving your talent, that's reverential worship. I mean, that's saying to God, God, I love you and I love you so much that I'm gonna trust you in areas that it's hard for me to to trust. So let me ask you the question, how are you sowing? Are you sowing? For most of us, this pushes against your comfort. And I just want to challenge you. I want to encourage you. In, in a season as we're coming up where, man, materialism spikes because of Christmas and we want to have all the feels, I just want to encourage you to take a step of maturity in this area in your life, it's seed, it's time, it's harvest. We say it like this, we get to give. We don't give to get. We get to 